All right, so we had an interesting explosion over the weekend. This largely erupted as a result of discourse over the assassination of an Iranian nuclear scientist in Iran. Now, John Brennan, um, who's somebody who actually himself presided over some of these assassinations whenever he ran some of the intelligence agencies here in the United States, actually criticized it, leading then to a very unlikely, uh, I wouldn't call it a fight, but a debate between Congresswoman Ilhan Omar and friend of our show, Glenn Greenwald. Ryan, uh, could you break this down a little bit and largely where you see things falling along this fight? There's discussion amongst the Logan Act and so much more. Let's throw Glenn's piece up there on the screen. Just explain to us exactly what's going on here. Well, so the, the debate was sort of over uh, the, the Logan Act and and hypocrisy. And I think it actually resulted from a, a bit of a misunderstanding uh, between the two parties that were mm -hmm. that were debating here. But the, the general point that that Glenn has been making is that it is is two or three fold. You know, a the, the the Logan Act is absurdly unconstitutional. And I think Ilhan Omar would would agree with that, as would almost every legal scholar. It the Logan Act says that, you know, it, it's a crime, you know, if if you're uh, somehow kind of influencing uh, American foreign policy by talking to foreign uh, representatives outside of a, uh, official channels. That's not exactly what it says, and it's and it's up to interpretation what the actual statute covers. But clearly, that's uh, there. There's there's no way you can make that a crime and 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 square it at all with the First Amendment. It's a it's a legacy of the kind of when when you had the Alien and Sedition Acts and those other things that the Federalists were doing to try to lock up newspaper right. editors that were that were critical of them. And we've we've moved. We've we've moved beyond that. However, Mike Flynn was kind of uh, was kind of brought in for questioning, uh, or or and and or was accused by members of the kind of liberal resistance of violating the Logan Act when during the transition he said to a Russian ambassador, "Look, uh, you know, don't." Don't respond to you know the, these provocations by the Obama administration because we're coming in soon and we want to we want to deal with you uh, you know and we'll let's you know let, let's not do anything crazy now and so when he then met with FBI agents he lied to the FBI agents or uh, he misremembered it's not even clear that mm -hmm. that that he lied and some of the agents don't don't believe that he intentionally lied uh, either way he was uh, ch he was charged he pled guilty uh, and he's since been pardoned. Now, what Brennan uh, posted on Twitter was to the Iranians, you know, don't respond to this provocation from the is Israeli government. Uh, you know, let let the next administration work out uh, some some deal. And Glenn Pounce for, uh, on the hypocrisy. Here's a member yes. of the, the Trump resistance who is doing the exact same thing that that the resistance wanted, uh, you know, Flynn to be put in in prison for, and. Ilhan Omar came in and essentially said, well, I'm not sure that this is actually a violation of of the Logan Act. And so uh, Glenn interpreted that as as her defending Brennan, uh, well, right. defending the Logan Act. And, and Omar said, no, not not at all. I'm not I'm not defending either. It's just that my interpretation of the law is such that you can say something on on Twitter uh, without violating the, the, the Logan Act as written, which doesn't mean that you support the Logan Act. I, I, I suspect that she'd like to see the Logan Act repealed. Uh -huh. So this is this is good because it's actually very useful to understand this. I, but I do think that the debate itself is very important because, I mean, as you point out, I mean, Mike Flynn was doing his job. It was diplomacy. He was the incoming national security advisor. And it would be perfectly reasonable to see the Biden team reaching out to the Iranian or Israeli government or whatever and being like, hey, we're about to take office. Calm down. You know, don't worry. This is what we're going to do. This is what people do all the time. I mean, we saw this right. in transitions between like uh, Nixon and LBJ around Vietnam. I mean, look, you know, this is how governments in general are run. And it's important, I think, to, to see that hypocrisy as well in terms of that prosecution of Mike Flynn. As you point out, I mean, with the FBI director, the FBI agents themselves didn't even think that uh, Flynn was trying to be misleading. Of course, actually, because I forgot to even cover this. Uh, Flynn officially got pardoned <laughs> while we were right. uh, while we were all off, which, you know, is this whole host of same things, people coming. I think it's the part about the tweet is the most interesting thing because I remember these Russia gators all during uh, Russia Gate and all this nonsense. But Trump just tweeted, "It's an official admission of obstruction of justice," right? And it's like, well, you know, tweets counted for them then, but apparently not now. So what do I know? Right, and the most 
egregious act probably in our in our history of, of this type of interference happened actually before an election. If you remember the, the story of you know, Richard Nixon and That's Henry right. Kissinger scuttling uh, peace talks but, uh, with the North Vietnamese, essentially sending signals to them saying, don't give don't give LBJ a, a treaty because that'll uh, they'll get Humphrey elected in November. You know, work with us and and we'll give you a better deal now. Maybe uh, there's there's some there's some crime that you can you can find in there, given that it led to you know tens of thousands of Americans and and hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese getting killed. Maybe not. Maybe you know maybe maybe those right. shenanigans are just what what Kissinger is able to to get away with. But that's that's not even remotely what we're talking about here. Like you said, it's just it's just it's just people's and Brennan isn't connected to the mm-hmm. uh, the Biden right. administration just as far as I know. He's just a, right. he's. He's, you know, once CIA, former CIA, whatever. Uh, but he's just saying, let's not have a war, and and th- and that's similar to what uh, Flynn was saying yes. to Russia. Like, let's <laughs> let's 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 keep let's keep it down here. Let's not let's not do this this tit tit for tat. Uh, let let us let us handle this. And so I think you know, Glenn Glenn is is just trying to make that point. And, and Omar responded by saying, you know, your feelings are 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 tied up in this, Glenn took that as his feelings toward Omar. And he said, no, I'm, I've, you know, I've supported you and defended you in the past. And I, I think what she meant is that his feelings toward the resistance and, and towards uh, Brennan, who he has made no, no secret of his, uh, you know, his hostility toward, were, were, were kind of confusing his, his interpretation of the Logan Act. I think that's, that's kind of where they, they, they left the debate in the end. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, well, I think it's an important uh, conversation. I'm glad we could at least highlight it here. All right, we're gonna have more rising for everybody right after this.